Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today in the session. So today in this session, we are going to continue from task three of this project, malloc and free. So this task here says we should write a function that returns a pointer to a two-dimensional array. We know what a two-dimensional array is, right? We've talked about it when we're talking about pointers. So this is a prototype. And as you can see here, it takes in two parameters, width and what and height. So each element of the grid should be initialized to zero because two-dimensional arrays are mostly in grid format, right? So the function should return null and failure if width or height is zero or negative return a null. So what this means is that we are going to write a function that returns a pointer to a 2D array. So we are going to create a space for 2D array. And this width here you're seeing here is going to be the width of the array and this height will be the height of the array. So it means width here is just going to be the, the number of columns in the array and height is going to be the number of rows. Let me give you an example. If assuming my width is, let's say width is equals to, let's say three and my height is equals to four, right? So my height is going to be four. It means I'm going to have four rows isn't it and three columns so let's say i have one two these are the element of the id three right so it's going to be four five six seven eight nine let's say ten eleven and twelve so this here is what is a, is an array which has how many rows four rows one two three four right and how many columns three columns did you see that three rows sorry four rows three columns isn't it so the width here is going to represent the number of columns and the height is going to represent the number of rows so let's take note of that all right so what do we need to do first here and you can see here it says each element of the grid should be initialized to zero when you look at this this is a grid right this is a grid okay so what do we need to do first let's open the file so three alloc grid so vi paste this all right so as you can see i have my betty documented already to avoid time wastage so let's begin writing the function so when you look at this here this is a pointer right it's returning a pointer when you see this it means what it's returning a double pointer to what to an integer why are we getting a pointer because it's a two-dimensional array that this function is going to return so that's why we're getting a double pointer here do you get it? The first is going to point to the height and the first is going to, to, to point to the width. So we need to take care of that, right? So it means that we know that we need to create a pointer to hold the return value of malloc, right? But in this case, it's going to return what? A double pointer. So I also need a double pointer to hold the return value of malloc, right? And what am I storing in the location that malloc will allocate to me? It's an integer. So I need to say int asterisk double pointer right so i just call it output right that's what i need to do first so let's pass in this condition which says if width or height is zero or negative that is if it is less than or equals to zero we are going to return null right so i will say if width is less than or equals to zero right or height is less than or equals to zero what should we return we are going to return a null isn't it? That's what the question asks us to do. So what do we need to do next? The next thing is we need to allocate memory now. And this memory we are going to allocate, it's going to allocate memory for the whole array. Okay? It's going to allocate memory for the whole array. And inside the whole array, how many columns do we have? Sorry, how many rows do we have? Because we need to have our rows for us to be able to create the columns. That is the data inside the rows. Right? We need to have what? The row. We need to first find the row and then we'll be able to create the element that will be stored inside the row. And this element is going to form what? The content or it's going to form the columns of the array. Right? So what I'm going to do here is I'll just say output. Right? Is equals to I'll call malloc and then size of what? Size of int. But in this case, I'm going to put asterisk. So why am I using this asterisk? Because this memory I want to allocate here is for what is for the rows here. So I'm pointing to the row now. I want to store, I want memory allocated for the rows. Do you get it? So, and what am I going to put here? This is going to be times what? What is expected to keep track of the row? The height is expected to keep track of the number of rows we have, right? So I just say times height. 
So memory will be allocated for what? For this row, this row, and also this row, and also this row. Memory will be allocated for the rows. Memory will not be allocated for the columns yet. Okay, it will just be allocated for the rows now. Do you get it? So now the next thing is we need to check if malloc fails, right? So if malloc is equal to not, sorry, not malloc, it's supposed to be output. So if output, output is equal to not, it means malloc fails, right? So I just say return and no. Isn't it? That's what should happen, right? So the next thing we need to do is we need to now allocate space for the word for the columns. Right, we need to allocate space for the columns. So for us to allocate space for the columns, we need to loop over each row. So for each row, we need to allocate space for each of the elements inside that row. That will make up the what? The number of columns. Right? So here I will need a loop. I will say for i equals to zero. I will declare the variable i later on. So how many rows are we iterating over now? We are iterating height number of rows, right? So this is going to be less than height. Isn't it? And then what? I plus plus. So this is what we need to do, right? So the next thing we need to do is what? We need to now allocate memory for each element of the row, of the row right? We need to allocate memory for each element of the row. And how do we do that? We simply need to say output, right? At index i, right? We are allocating memory now for what? For the entire row here. Like I said initially, memory is not allocated for us to store the content of the array, of each row, right? But now we are going to allocate memory to store the content of each row. So why am I saying output i? It means output at index i. If i is close to zero, it means it's going to target index zero of our array, which is what? Index zero is going to be this part here, right? Index one will be what? This part. Index two will be this part. Index three will be this part. Isn't it? So now it's going to target index zero. That's for the first iteration. So output is equal to what? Malloc. And then this is going to be size of what am I storing in the in the in, inside the row, I'm storing integer values, right? So it's going to be size of int, right? And then times what? Times width, because how many columns am I expected to store inside each row? How many number of characters? Width is going to keep track of the number of characters I'm going to store or the number of integers, which is going to be the number of columns, right? So that's why this is going to be times width. Do you get it? So the next thing we need to do is we need to check if malloc fails, right? So I now say if output here at index i is equals to null, it means malloc fails, right? So when you look at this, there is something I need to explain here before we proceed. There is no way in the test file here that the function is being freed, right? The function has not been freed in any case here. So we need to free the function, right? So if output at index i is equals to null, it means memory will not be allocated for this particular row, right? Memory will not be allocated because it is null. So if it is null, then I need to free the memory above here. This entire memory need to be freed. Because if this first allocation failed for this row, it means there will not be space for the other rows as well, right? So I just need to free the memory that was allocated for me initially. So I'll just say free, and then I will call on output, right? I will free my output. So what if for the first iteration, that is output index zero, memory is allocated to me, right? It is only, let's say, at output index two that memory is not allocated. Assuming for this row now, assuming for this row, memory is not allocated. So if memory is not allocated for this, what should happen? It means I'll not be able to store all the numbers that I want to store in my array, right? So I need to free the memories previously allocated. So for this, I need a loop. Right, I need a loop to free this memory. So let me just say for g equals to zero. I'm starting from index zero as well. So this is going to be g less than, sorry, less than or equals to what or equals to height. I want to free these memories here. Memories that have been allocated for me initially before what? Before the null is returned for this particular row. That's what I want to free. So g less than or equals to what? Or equals to height g plus plus. Right? So this is going to loop over the entire row. Right? And for each iteration, I will just say free output at what? Out, output at index G. 
okay so this is going to free what all the memory that is allocated for these different what these different rules right if any of the allocation fails this is what will happen okay if any of the allocation fails this is what will happen do you get it so what do we need to do next after all these things i will just say return anon right i will just say return null. so what this means is after freeing the memories then we return null. we cannot just return null like this we need to free the memory so that other programs will be able to use it okay all right so the next thing we need to do here is what after the if statement we need to what this question here when you look at it it says each element of the grid should be initialized to zero so now what we need to do is to initialize each element of the grid to zero right so in this case i also need another loop right so here i will just say for g g equals to zero as well so what should be the condition the condition should be g has to be less than what has to be less than width isn't it because this is already looping over the height right this is looping over the, the number of rows right so now i need to loop over the columns right i need to loop over the columns. so this way i'll be able to target all the characters all all the location all the indexes of my array so for j is close to zero j less than width and then i'll say g plus plus right so here what i'm going to do is simply say output at index i and also index g is equals to what is equals to zero so this is going to store zero at what at output index i and also output index g so assuming i is close to zero so this will target what output index i which is what the row so this is going to target row zero which is this right this is going to target this this row here let me just row zero right so if root zero is targeted so j is also what zero for the first iteration so row zero column zero is iterated sorry is targeted so which one is column zero this is column zero right this one is column zero so what is at index zero sorry what is at row zero index zero it is what it is one in this case so we are setting it to what to zero do you get it so if the iteration increment the value of j if it's increment it's going to have what j will now be one so it's going to target index zero or row zero column one right this is what column one and it will initialize it with zero j will be incremented will initialize it to zero then i will now be incremented as well it will move to this index j is zero this is zero that's how it will keep doing it will initialize all the grid with what with the value zero do you get it so the next thing we need to do is simply say return what we are returning a pointer to the newly allocated space right so we are saying return output output is the newly allocated memory right all right so let's run betty here so betty three okay trailing white space line 25 set number right so which one is line 25 okay, this is line 25 right yeah there is a space so let's run betty again whoa did i not remove the line all right sorry the space set number again line 25 i've removed it already all right so i think it's okay now so let's run betty again yes so betty is fine so let's create the test file to test this function all right copy so vi this is a squat three right yeah so three and let's see so paste all right so let's compile the program now where is the compilation command yeah so paste whoa so what happened here okay i've not declared the variables i and j i totally forgot about that so let's do that here so this is going to be int i and also g i think this is okay okay so let's compile again so as you can see it has been compiled so let's run the compiled file so did you see that we are getting the exact output here okay so memories have been allocated to each of these characters or oh, sorry in integers you are seeing here and also what they are initialized to zero why are we getting 98 here because at this index here row zero index three 
Ro, sorry, row 0, column 0, row 0, column 1, row 0, column 2, row 0, column 3. The value has been set to 98. And for row 3, column 4, the value has been set to 402. That's why you're having something like this. Okay, so don't forget to add commit and push to a GitHub and then you can run your checks. We are going to stop here. In the next video, we are going to continue from task 4 of this project. So thank you very much till we meet in our next session.